Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the build of the Aviation Design Diamond. I know it's a little bit covered up with, uh, with paper right now, but if you watched the last video, we were painting the interior and we haven't got it done yet. That's why the fuselage is still covered. So guys, if this is your first time finding my channel, hit that subscribe button down below, give the video a thumbs up. Let's dive into this build and I'll tell you guys what we're doing in this video. All right guys, in this uh, video, this portion of the build, we are gonna do a few things. Number one, we are going to, not necessarily in this order either, but number one, we are going to um, put the speckle finish on the interior of the fuselage. So last video, we got the blue painted, it's still damp, and uh, we can't put the speckle over it yet until it dries, so we're waiting to do that. Number two, we are going to start assembling the landing gear and working on the wings. I think the landing gear is gonna be the primary portion of this video, along with painting the interior of the fuselage. Um, then as we get into the wings, we're gonna start wiring up the wings. Now we do have a phenomenal set of uh, Sky Candy, a full light set coming. Thank you, Sal from Sky Candy Landing Lights. I appreciate it. Um, that is gonna be uh, a, probably its own install uh, video, but that also helps us to understand what we need to do to get things ready for the landing lights. So the reason I say that is because we're putting some, some tip lights on this plane and uh, we need to run the wires for the tip lights. So um, super excited about that stuff showing up. Okay guys, so since we cannot do anything with the fuselage probably until tomorrow, uh, we're gonna let this dry and we're gonna pull, uh, put the fuselage aside. We're gonna pull the landing gear out and we're gonna start to get into the landing gear. And then we are going to probably start installing it in the wings and then in the front of the fuselage as well too. We've got a servo install, so there's lots to do with the landing gear, but let's dive into the Bayotech electric landing gear for the diamond from Aviation Design. Okay guys, so we uh, have everything laid out for the retracks. Um, everything's quite simple as far as how things go together. So we've got the two main retracks. We've got uh, the nose, which is a, uh, a firewall mount. So it's pretty impossible to mess that one up. Uh, we've got the two main tires. We've got the, uh, the front tire, the two struts, and the nose strut. Okay, so all the wheels that come in the kit are identical. So there's no mains or fronts or anything like that. They're all exactly the same wheels. Uh, what determines whether you use them on the, the mains or the front is the actual um, Allen screws used to assemble the, uh, the wheels. So the front one uses the angled ones because there's no brakes. The mains use the normal head Allen bolts and uh, reason for that is the brake rotors, I guess you'd call them, sit on the Allen heads and that's what actually spins them around and makes them work. So step number one is we need to get each of these wheels, they split apart like this, we need to get them mounted on the rubber and screwed together. So that's what we'll, we'll do first. little side note for you please don't forget your Loctite you guys need to Loctite every single aluminum metal bolt on the airplane that's super important and you'll notice that I'm skipping each one so when you tighten things up like this and I'm not tightening them you're starting, skipping one, starting, skipping one here, skipping one there, skipping one, down. Ok 
Okay, and there's the finished assembly. If you forget the Loctite on there, guaranteed you're going to lose bolts. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing to the other one. And then on the front, we're gonna use the pan head or the angular um, bolts. All right guys, so the wheels are assembled. Next step is we're gonna open up the brake rotors. And these things are usually quite gummy. They're, they're um, usually wrapped or dipped in something. These ones actually aren't bad. The ones I did on my Tudor were pretty nasty. So I'm just gonna uh, clean these off with rubbing alcohol, but uh, you can see by how sticky the package is that uh, they had grease or a coating or something on them. Okay, so what we want to do is basically install these. There's kind of a shiny side and then a dull side. Um, I don't think it matters at all because they're going to get worn in, but I just make sure that I match the sides up. Okay, so I'm just going to put the shiny side out. You can see that they fit right over top of the bolt heads. That's how the brakes actually turn. And then the actual brake unit itself works with that. Okay, so now we've got the brake units. So I love these electric brakes from Biotech. They work amazing. Ultimately, they are super simple. They're just electromagnets. Um, the more current that goes to the, uh, the magnet, the harder that this thing pulls towards the magnet. It's really that simple, guys. Okay guys, so first thing we want to do with uh, getting these wheels mounted to the, uh, the struts is we need to get the axles inserted onto the, uh, the struts themselves. So there's two parts to this, three parts actually. So the lock nut goes on the shallow end, the shorter threaded end, and uh, this actually holds the wheel on the axle. Now the longer threaded end goes through the strut and then we put a lock nut on the back side, and all of this needs to be uh, Loctited. So just out of preference, I'm gonna use the liquid Loctite instead of the, uh, the paste. I just like it better for these applications, because I find it flows better. So all we're doing is this. Now in the past, I have made an error and I have taken the axle and actually tightened it and scored the, uh, the spinning surface and that is not a good thing to have happen. So you don't need to do that. <clears throat> okay, we take an eight, uh, what is it? A 10 mil, yeah, 10 millimeter wrench. And we just tighten that down. Okay, now it's not going anywhere. I'm just gonna clean the Loctite up. And we'll re repeat the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> All right, there she is. Both of the main struts are have their axle installed. Next thing we can do is install the wheel and tire combo. So the only kicker with this is you wanna make sure you have the brakes going towards the back of the struts like this, okay? This is the leading or the front edge of the struts. This is the back of the struts, okay? That's the only thing you wanna be um, sure of when you do this. 
There we go. We want to make sure that that uh, uh, brake rotor stays um, in its proper spot. There's a close-up for you guys of what it looks like. So there's little tabs on each side of the brake that grabs down onto the uh, onto the the strut itself and prevents the brake from spinning. And then we just route these wires up nicely with some zip ties and things like that. So okay, so next thing we want to do is we want to get this combination all mounted. So now we're going to install the lock nuts. Now you want to make sure there's a little bit of play when this is all done so the brakes can actually work. You don't want to keep tightening this down so it uh, so the wheel's hard to spin basically. And you can actually maybe hear the brake disc moving around. Alright guys, with the mains done, now we're going to move on to the nose section. Now the nose section is pretty straightforward. You've got your wheel, your axle, and we've got two spacers. Now the spacers are different sizes. And the reason they're different sizes is because we have one side of the, the wheel or the hub with more material, the other side with, with less material. Okay, so the longer one's going to go on this side, shorter one's going to go on the other side. There we go. Okay, so it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to get that through, seriously. And then we just put a little bit of blue Loctite on this side. You know, I don't like to go crazy on this side because we are dealing with an aluminum, um, aluminum axle. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of strength with regards to threads and stuff there. So just need to be ginger with that. And you don't need to go super tight on this. You're not going to gain anything if you go tighter. So there's going to be just a little bit of play in the axle, which is perfectly fine. All right, and that's the, uh, the front strut assembly. All right, guys, we're just going to power things up here. I haven't powered it up yet. I've just plugged everything in. So we're running the uh, landing gear off of a two cell LiPo. Um, we've got a two cell LiPo going into our receiver. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is we need to extend these trunnions in order to get the, uh, the bolts um, to actually put the, the gear together. So that's why I'm uh, extending these and it's fun to play with them. Okay, so we'll switch this on. Now this is the newer version of Retrack, so I'm not sure if I need to program anything yet. Uh, I'm just going over the manual right now and it says I do. So we need to learn the transmitter to the setup. <clears throat> All right, guys, well, I've read through the manual and uh, there's really nothing to do at this point because they come pre-programmed. But if you want to make any changes or have to make any changes, refer to your manual if you're getting some Bayotech retracks. Um, so pretty, pretty straightforward. I actually uh, ran these a little bit on a two cell LiPo. I just hooked up a three cell LiPo and they are uh, they work even better. They're, they're quicker. So, I so as far as batteries for this plane, I'm going to end up with two two cell LiPos for the um, receiver one turbine battery, one um, three cell LiPo for the gear and the Sky Candy lighting setup. And then we'll have a two cell LiPo for the, uh, the smoke pump. Um, I could tee the smoke pump off of a receiver battery. That's an option. I don't know if I really wanna do that. Um, we'll see. Anyways, the last thing I'll tell you about the, uh, the Bayotech retracts and I'm not sure how they all work. I'm not an electrical guy, but I know the Bayotech retracts, they've got three lines on them. The red line is, I, I believe it's the red line. The red line is actually a sensor. So you can adjust the stops on their gear 
so it's not actually hitting the end of the uh, the retract or the trunnion and overloading and then stopping it's actually um, uh, a programmed stop sequence and that's adjustable as well too so here's what they look like on a three cell lipo they're quite quick <clears throat> Perfect. And the little controller actually tells you um, if you've got an over voltage situation or things like that. So the little uh, the little upside down U symbol, I don't know what it's called. That's a good thing. That means that everything's working properly. So, okay guys, with that stuff done, we are able to put in our uh, pinch bolts. Now we're not going to Loctite these because they are not uh, in place yet. And that's one other thing I really like about the uh, this gear for the Diamond is generally on most Biotech retract setups, um, there is set screws on the trunnion and on the legs, now on this set, there's set screws on the legs, which is great because there, there's four massive set screws. They work great. And then there's uh, there's actually a pinch setup, which is fairly normal on the trunnion. And I, I like the pinch setup better because um, I find it holds better. Anyways, I think this is awesome. And that trunnion is just beefy beyond anything I've ever seen before. It's just beautiful. So we will be Loctiting these later on when we actually get the gear all set up for its final toe in and things like that. Okay guys, so for setting up the nose, basically the way the nose works on this is you've got a pin that goes all the way through. Okay, now this is an extremely accurate fit on this. But basically the pin goes through and then this collar sits on top like that. Now you don't wanna have any of that pin coming past the edge of the collar, and then the angled beveled part needs to go up. Uh, if you have anything protruding too high, it's possibly gonna hit the threaded rod, which would be no good. So um, I'm gonna get this set up with some lube on the, uh, the actual pin. So all I'm doing now is I'm just taking that pin, grabbing it lightly with some pliers, and just twisting it to loosen it up a little bit. Now hopefully you guys can see it in there, but the pin is flush with the top of the, uh, the collar. Okay. <clears throat> so now it's loosened up enough where I can turn it with my hands, which is perfect. And then what we'll do is we'll take the two set screws. We're going to use Loctite on them. We just tighten those guys up and perfect fit so it's nice and snug that's what we're looking for all right so next thing we have to do is get the servo mount mounted on to the retract unit so this is pretty straightforward uh, it goes on like this and uh, only goes together one way two bolts to put it all together And that's it. We don't want to put Loctite inside the hole because there's a hole going right into the pin and that would prevent the pin from working. Okay, we do have some play here. I just want to make sure that, that uh, the actual plate itself is perpendicular to the, um, the shaft or the strut as best as possible. So I'm just going to snug those up lightly we'll adjust this so it's close and then snug it up all right guys so um in order to fit the servo on the bracket um i had to sand the bracket out a little bit they actually talk about this in the manual so no big deal it's a nice snug fit gotta make sure we put it on the right way okay and I am using the rubber grommets on here. And the reason I'm using the rubber grommets is number one, I need a little bit more space 
but uh, obviously the uh, the steering servo you get a little bit of vibration with uh, once you're actually steering and using it so that's why I'm using the rubber grommets all right guys I'm just doing a test fit of the servo arms here so if I use this hangar 9 servo arm that I have or the JR one and use this innermost hole uh, it's extremely close to the retract unit. Too close for comfort in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this unit down and I'm actually going to drill a hole in between these two guys here. So I'm going to drill a hole right in this area and that will give us uh, enough clearance, enough servo movement, things like that. And then basically this ball gets threaded in there and uh, this is one end of the uh, actuating system. So I'm just gonna get this all set up and then I'll be back. All right guys, we've got a bunch more clearance on the servo arm now and everything is going to work beautifully. So we got about a centimeter, 10 millimeters of clearance there. So I'm just gonna fasten the servo arm on with Loctite now. That's two pinch bolts and everything. The servo is not screwed down yet to the uh, the mount, so we'll do that as soon as I'm done this. And then we've got our four screws that come with it to screw down the servo to the mount. I need some washers on those guys. And these are the same washers that we used to mount the uh, surface servos onto the aluminum mounts. All right, so nice and solid. Perfect. So last thing to do is to create the, uh, the linkage setup. So we'll just check the uh, threaded pieces here and I think we're gonna be too long. Ooh, this is a nice rod, it actually has an Allen key on the end. <laughs> wow, that's pretty fancy and high tech. All right guys, so once you get the linkage basically set up, we wanna make sure it's sitting at uh, 90 degrees to each other. So here's this ball, there's that ball, okay? And then we clip it in. The nice thing about how accurate all this stuff is, is there's almost zero play in this uh, in this gear setup but uh, that's okay I'm not going to worry about that now because um, we don't have this completely set up yet I'm not sure if I'm going to run it through the um, the gear controller because you can run the steering with a Y off the rudder through the, 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 the gear controller so we've got lots of different ways to do this we are putting the, the Gyro 1E from Powerbox in here, so that uh, will be have to plug be plugged into the system as well too. So, anyways, guys, that is the uh, the retract assembly. Uh, we still need to put these guys on the actual units, but that's not a big deal. Um, we just need to do up those four set screws. But uh, before we'll do we do that, we'll probably just put these in the wings first. So that's the Baotech setup. Um, Pretty straightforward and easy. All right, guys, so we are gonna paint the uh, the speckled finish on the interior of this. Now you wanna be, I mean, well, you can do whatever you want, but you wanna be fairly um, stingy with this stuff. It can be quite heavy um, because it's like chunks of paint, right? So you just, uh, just be careful with it. It does stink really bad um, because it's like in a glue, but, uh, our main focus here is in the visible areas, so mainly down the center and kind of the top of the uh, the intake areas. Uh, the rest of it is really not going to be visible, the front uh, front wall. But so I, I'm not so worried about the areas that are going to be under the tanks and hidden and things like that. But uh, um, I'm going to focus mainly on the visible areas. So.
So quick first coat, same thing as the nose, the, uh, the second coat really helps tie this all together. Um, so we'll let that dry, probably be able to do uh, another coat in a little bit here. All right guys, I did add a second coat. Didn't uh, show it being sprayed, but it's basically exactly the same format as the first. And there it is. So I'm happy with it. It looks better when it dries, I find as well too. Um, but anyways, that's done. It uh, definitely spruces up the interior a little bit. And again, most of it'll be, uh, be hidden. I'm just gonna pull the paper off and we will take a final look with uh, the paper off. All right, and there's a shot, guys, with the tape off. And I think it looks pretty good. It's gonna look better when it's dry. Nice, clean finish. All right, guys, that is the end of this particular portion of the build of the Aviation Design Diamond. Hopefully you enjoyed um, watching the retracts and gear and everything go together. Uh, we completed the painting on this video as well, too, of the interior, so making good progress. I think on the next video, guys, the next uh, section we're going to work on is the wiring on the wings and probably getting the gear actually installed because that's part of the wiring as well too. That'll be gear on the front as well. Um, so we'll start to get the gear in the plane, finish up some of the wiring, and uh, that's pretty much all I can tell you for the next build video, guys. So thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos. Thanks for all the awesome feedback, guys. I appreciate it. Love hearing that you guys like these videos. Um, I enjoy putting them together and uh, I enjoy sharing the build experience with you and trying to share as much of my wisdom with you guys as possible. So thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any questions or comments, list them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already and you just found the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. If you found the channel a long time ago and you haven't subscribed, you might as well subscribe. Thanks guys for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.